Of all the infamous Wrestling Road stories, it's surprising that more wrestlers haven't come to blows in violent ways. Most of the road stories that we hear are of drunken, drugged up performers ribbing each other and things occasionally getting out of hand, but it seems that blood is very rarely spilled. October the 27th, 1993, the wrestlers of WCW had landed in the UK to start a gruelling European tour, and the northern English town of Blackburn was to play host to the first night of the schedule. It would also play host to a violent coming to blows between two of wrestling's top superstars at the time, Sid Vicious and Arn Anderson. After a long journey across the pond, some of the boys were drinking in the hotel bar on the first night in England. It is said that they were in good spirits until an argument broke out which led to one of wrestling's most brutal fights outside of the ring. As the beer flowed, Arn Anderson overheard Sid Vicious insulting Ric Flair, his friend and on-screen stablemate in The Four Horsemen, a faction that had dominated WCW for years. Words were exchanged and beers were thrown in the hotel bar before both men decided to go their separate ways to their hotel rooms. Vicious was still wound up about the incident and decided to pay Anderson a visit in his hotel room. The results would be bloody. This is the story of the incident as told by Vader, who was witness to the event, and Sid Vicious himself. If I was asked to get on the stand and testify, I would blame that one on the company, because we flew over there, 8 or 9 hour flight, got off the plane, travelled about two and a half, three hours, got off the bus and wrestled. After the matches, it was back on the bus and we travelled another 10 to 12 hours to get to where we were going. It was just ludicrous. I mean, they should have got us off the plane, wrestled, went to bed and then skipped a day. Know what I'm saying? Skipped a day and stayed over there. We're talking about there was beer, the food ran out, and everybody was drinking. By the time we got off 10 hours later, we're talking after an 8 hour plane ride, a 2.5 hour trip, fighting and a 10 hour buzz ride back. The guys were frazzled and worn. I remember it was Sid Vicious and Arn Anderson, myself and a couple of other guys sitting at this table. We were finishing up a beer while everyone else was still checking in. I remember getting up and saying to the guys, I'm going to bed. Apparently, Sid and Arn had squared off after I'd left. Sid Vicious had no beef with Arn Anderson, but Anderson and Ric Flair were virtually brothers. Vicious notoriously had no time for the Nature Boy and resented the money he was earning at the time. WCW wasn't doing great business in 1993, and that was seriously impacting the wrestlers' wages. As the beers flowed, voices were raised on the subject, causing Anderson to get in the face of Vicious. Anderson broke a beer bottle and started threatening Vicious with it. For a while, it seemed like cooler heads had prevailed, as each man went their separate ways. As I was going to my room, Anderson and a bunch of the other guys were in the hallway, and he broke a beer bottle and threatened to cut me. My room was only just a few rooms down from him. I passed his room, took a left, and went into my room about four doors down. I got in there, and I wasn't going to sleep real nice. I wanted to go back to the bar, but I actually went into my room, ate a part of my sandwich, and said to myself, Man, this motherfucker, I have a bad temper too. I said, this fucker threw a beer in my face, and now he's threatening me with a fucking beer bottle broken. You know, you just have to draw a fucking line. There was a chair sitting right there, so I broke a leg off it, and I was going to go whack him in his fucking head a couple of times. When I got back down there, there was nobody in the doorway or the hallway, and Anderson's door was shut. So I knocked on his door and said, Come out here, motherfucker. Bring your beer bottle. Some words were exchanged. I couldn't totally hear him, but I hear him falling down and stumbling around, and I think, Ah, he's fucked up. I looked at my hand and thought to myself, This is fucking stupid. So I threw the fucking thing. You can look at the records the police had. The stick he said I hit him with never touched him. It was 20 feet the opposite way where the fight had happened. And that stick had not one drop of blood. Not one dent in it like it had been hit or nothing. So Arn comes out. And I'd left, turn my back, see his door open, turn round. 
and he stood there with a pair of scissors in his hands. I just went like this with him and I said, hey man, this has gone too fucking far. And he stood there coming after me. I don't remember getting stabbed in the beginning. There were two doors in the corridor there and he backed me up there and I had nowhere to fucking run. When he came in to me and got close to me, I think I hit him one time and he fell down like at my feet. When he did, I looked at him and out of the corner of my eye, I saw the scissors fall. They were falling out of my stomach. I have a scar right there. So when I saw the scissors falling out, I realised I'd been stabbed. I didn't feel it in my face or hands, but he launched back for them a second time. But my feet had got them first. And then, I don't know, it happened so fast. In just a few seconds, Anderson, drunk, had lunged at Vicious. Anderson penetrated Vicious with a pair of scissors, leaving the blade inside him. The scissors fell out of Vicious to the ground, allowing Vicious to pick them up and retaliate, wounding Anderson several times with them. Eyewitnesses say the entire place was soaked in blood, as Vicious saw red himself and attacked Anderson with a frenzy, stabbing him and kicking him in the head. Out of both men, Anderson came out the worst for wear after the fight. Vader said, Then I was in my room when I heard some yelling and screaming out in the lobby. So I literally came out in my underwear. Me in my underwear, £420. It was quite a sight. I have these huge legs, you know. So the next thing I know is I saw Sid kind of doing this monster walk towards me. And literally, blood. It wasn't dribbling down. It actually had a little power to it. It was coming out about an inch from his belly. It was pouring out of his belly. I remember I just grabbed his back and I stuck my thumb in the hole. I didn't know what else to do. I just stuck it in there and it stopped the bleeding or drastically slowed it down. I yelled at someone to get a chair and told the lady to get me some towels. I did so and I held a towel on him until the ambulance came and I walked him over to the ambulance. Then the guy said, okay, I've got to help him. I was completely covered in blood. You know, I never really saw Arn because he was at a different part of the hotel. Vicious walked off in a daze while Anderson collapsed on the floor due to how much blood had been lost. The emergency services were called and both Vicious and Anderson ended up going to the hospital. The police stayed behind with the wrestlers in order to fill out various pieces of paperwork just in case the brawl ended up in a homicide. The police, they came into my room to try and get me to press charges against him. I said, no man, I'm not going to press charges against him. We both made mistakes. I don't know how bad he's really hurt. I really didn't. And they're like, you know your friend, he's got not one scratch on him. Here, I'm having exploratory surgery already. I've got stabs on my face. And I said, he's not got a scratch on him. I thought maybe. As I said, it happened so fast. I really don't remember it happening. I thought, this motherfucker... So I was going to go and press charges on him. Later that night, the nurse came over to my room and said, Your friend is really messed up. So I dropped the charges. I think everyone was kind of in shock. We were extremely tired. And we had a meeting at the next venue, which was the next night. And Turner was thinking about shutting down that tour and bringing us all home. He was going to make a decision about what he was going to do. I mean, I don't know how much of that was a shoot or a work to scare us. Dusty had asked me to speak to everyone, so I did. Of all the people in the world, Arn was the last person I would, and I wouldn't want to do that to anybody, but he would be the last person in the world I would want to hurt. He'd been good to me as a person. I don't know what he might have said behind my back, but face to face, he was always a gentleman, but I can only assume he was like that at all times, and felt like that. So I later asked, what does Arn say? They said Arn said he was so fucked up, he can't remember anything. Arn Anderson was so drunk during the event that he couldn't remember it actually happening. Anderson ended up with 20 stab wounds to the chest while Sid had been stabbed four times. Luckily, both men walked out of the hospital and were deported back to the US the day after. No police files were filed after the incident. For Vicious, it would temporarily end his WCW career as his contract was terminated when he arrived back home. He would only return to the company six years later in 1999 after a stint in WWE. Arn Anderson got off with just a suspension. Today, both men are back on good terms, with Vicious apologising to Anderson profusely after the event. However, on that night in 1993, one strike in the wrong place could easily have killed either man and changed the course of wrestling 
forever.